Hello everybody and welcome back. As promised, today's video is going to show you how it is I prep the back of my tiles to get them ready for hanging. Um, these are already resined. I uh, put a couple coats of resin, art resin, on them. So if you're not familiar with working with resin and uh, would like to find out more about that, I would suggest go ahead and search for some YouTube videos on using that medium. Uh, this video picks off or picks up after the resining. Um, also, as promised, I'm going to tell you how you can enter the drawing for this jellyfish tile. Uh, so if you're not interested in the drawing part, you can go ahead and skip forward uh, to the rest of how to, to prep these tiles because this is going to take a second. <laughs> you can go to my website, voxarts.com, and I have five different ways there you can enter. The easiest is just by subscribing to my website mailing list, and that'll get you an email every time I have drawings. Um, I have two drawings a month that I am planning to do. The first one will be open to all of my social media. The second one uh, will be exclusive to my Patreon subscribers, which I will talk about in just a minute. Uh, you can also get an entry by going to Facebook, like and follow the Box Arts Facebook page, uh, comment, find a post and comment on it, and uh, find a post and share it on your own Facebook page. Make sure that that post is public, otherwise I will not be able to see it. Uh, you can also sponsor my work by donating as little as a buck. Um, that'll help me pay for the shipping for these monthly giveaways. You can do that uh, at the link here. I will also include it in the description as well as all this information. Uh, but that's paypal.me forward slash Vox Arts. Uh, as for my Patreon page, I'm really excited about building a community over there. Um, that's a monthly subscription, and for $2 a month, you will be entered in every drawing I have. Uh, as I said, the first drawing a month will be open to all of my social media platforms. The second drawing a month will be Patreon exclusive only. And then occasionally I will be adding extra drawings, um, and any Patreon subscriber will be added to all of those. There are also many other benefits available over there on Patreon, including limited edition prints, signed and numbered prints, um, and access to the digital print files that I use to make my prints, which you can use for anything you want, your own personal use or for uh, business resale use. Uh, and last but not least, if you make a purchase from me from uh, my website, a print, an original work, um, or make an, art, an order for a custom commissioned piece, then that will also get you entered into the drawing. All right, so I, again, will post all of that information in the description below, and you can find it on my website, voxarts.com. So let's get into this tile finishing business, shall we? As I stated, we are starting with a tile that already has its finishing coats of resin. Now, if you are taping your tiles before you paint and resin them, this makes this part so much easier. So basically, I'm just gonna grab my torch here and we're gonna heat up this resin ever so gently. Real quick, you don't wanna hold it too long. The tile holds heat and it will soften the front. And then you just peel the tape right off. Heat up the next one and Peel it right off. Easy peasy. You'll go back behind it with a piece of sandpaper um, and just smooth out those edges that it leaves behind on the back so that, you know, they can't be picked off or whatever. Now, if you're like uh, I did here, <laughs> I was so excited to do my very first YouTube video that I forgot to tape uh, this jellyfish tile. So I'm left with all these little bumps of resin and uh, it's a little more of a pain here. So now you gotta go in and just heat those up and pick them off with a knife. Um, and I just wanted to make a quick note too. You'll see I'm, I'm holding this tile in the middle. I'm trying not to put any pressure on the edges on the side that has resin because like I said, the tile does hold heat and it will soften that front resin ever so slightly as well. And you don't want to wind up um, getting, you know, prints or dents or anything like that in it. So it's best to just be very aware. Just do a couple little pieces at a time and do not overheat it. 
um, and do not apply pressure on the other side uh, when it's still hot. So yeah, just go through and get all those. It's a pain, it's a pain, it's a pain. So you'll see here in a minute once I get these all off that I take a little hand sander to smooth them all down. I suppose maybe you could start with the hand sander and um, buff these all out from the beginning that way. Maybe not even bother with the, the torch and uh, cutting them off. But I've never tried that. It's It just seems to me like it'd be a lot of dust and... Um, and I don't know, it just didn't seem like it would be something that I wanted to do. So I just did it this way. You can try it the other way and let me know how that goes. <laughs> if it winds up being way easier, that would be awesome. So yeah, after cleaning up my mess of all the bits of resin that was everywhere, because I don't want to scratch up the, the front of my tile, then I just go in and sand those down. Um, wipe the dust away, feel them good with my hand, make sure they're all nice and smooth. And uh, and once we get them all smooth, then we're ready to go on to the next phase. So you're going to get yourself some original Gorilla Glue, the yellow stuff, not the white stuff, because it doesn't work as well. And some of these D-rings from your hardware store. I'm going to spray the tile down with a little bit of water here, because the water activates the Gorilla Glue. And uh, then you'll see these D-rings have a flush side versus their little... Uh, bendy side there. <laughs> I'm sure that's the technical term for it, the bendy side. Um, so you'll just want to make sure that you get that flat side flush up against the tile. Um, the nice thing about the little grid marks here on the back of the tile is that you don't have to measure here. Uh, so get that situated where you're going to place those and you're only going to use a tiny little bit of this stuff because it expands really huge. I know it looks like I used a bit there, but I just put a little dab on it um, and spread it around with the tip. And then the same with the front. I put just a little dab in that little hole. And then I kind of spread it around the edges to make sure it goes over. Obviously, you're going to do the same thing on both sides. Now, the Gorilla Glue expands, and so it takes a little bit of babysitting because um, you don't want it to become these big, giant, huge blobs on the back of the tile. Uh, so I just have a little metal screw in my hand, and uh, and I'm going down and pushing the, the, the metal D-rings back up against the tile. Uh, because as it, the glue continues to expand, it kind of keeps pushing the metal up off the tile. Um, normally when you use Gorilla Glue, you're supposed to clamp the items together, which we obviously can't do here with this tile. So probably over the course of about a half of an hour, um, I just keep coming back and checking on this every five to 10 minutes um, and push the plates back down onto the tile and eventually it gets tacky enough that it won't lift anymore. I'm also every now and then going in and popping some of the little bubbles that form in this glue to kind of keep it from over expanding. Uh, now the bubbles I know aerate it and help it to cure so you don't want to go in there and completely flatten it out and get rid of all of them. Um, but it does help it to keep from getting too big as you're babysitting it to just go in and sort of pop some of those um, bubbles. And then once you get to a certain point, it gets to where it's not sticky and gooey on the top, but it's still kind of soft. So you can, with your fingers, just get in and kind of press it down um, and help flatten it the rest of the way. And, uh, and then let it cure for a few hours before you paint it. Um, and then as you can see, I'm getting ahead of myself here, or getting behind, I guess, in the narrating. Um, that was deco art uh, gloss enamel paint and so that's what I use on the back of my tiles um, the color you know can vary obviously depending on your painting but I use the enamel paints and just go in and I paint over the the Gorilla Glue and the hardware and everything 
And usually it only takes two coats, so get that first coat all nice and all nice and uh covered <laughs> and uh let it dry, go back for a second coat. So the next part I do here is I get ready to add my um my signature and title plate uh, to the back of the tile. I don't sign the front of them. Uh, and I didn't realize until going back and editing this video um, that I forgot to sign this one, guys. So I'm going to try and figure out a way, um, now that the whole thing is finished, to go back in and make sure there's a signature on it. Uh, but this is how I create my plate. So now would be when I'm supposed to sign it in that big blank space there in the middle. Um, but I'm just taking regular packaging tape here and sort of creating a, a lamination um, for this title piece, the title paper here. I just printed this on my printer from my, from my iPad. Um, but yeah, so create a, a lamination because I'm going to be sealing this on the back of the tile with resin. So there we go. And so we want it to be able to stay down. Um, so I've got this uh, double sided tape that I'm going to put on the back of this and didn't do very good at measuring it there. So I kind of have to troubleshoot as I go, but I get it figured out eventually. I don't have fingernails, so I struggled more with getting the backing off than <laughs> anything else uh, so so double-sided tape on this one um, you can decoupage the the little name I'm gonna call them plates even though it's paper the little name plates on um, if it's a flat tile but because these grooves are raised um, the resin would just run under it and create bubbles and shifting and movement so that's why I did the double-sided tape on this one um, I'm sure there's other methods you could use. I've thought about uh, using some polymer clay to create like a flat plate to put it on. So I'm just spreading the resin over this here and then going in and torching out the bubbles little by little. Um, like I said, I'm very conservative with how much heat I add to these tiles when I'm working the back of them because I don't want to ruin the resin on the front. Uh, so just a little splash of the torch here and there to go in and remove bubbles. And uh, then I'm just taking my popsicle stick and kind of pushing down these edges, making sure that they're all under there, all, all solid. And uh, it pushes out a few little bubbles. Go in and torch those. And then let it cure. I think I covered it with just a little cardboard box just to make sure I didn't get any lint or hair or dust on it. Uh, the art resin takes about eight hours-ish um, before it will no longer have stuff stick to it. So there it is, completely cured, and we're ready to go on to the next step, which is adding these nice little rubber feet that I put onto it so that it will sit nice and flush on the wall without having to worry about the hardware or the tile itself rubbing up against the wall. Fortunately for me, these little feet fit perfectly inside of the squares on the back of this tile. These are really good and sticky, you guys, so they're very, very sturdy. Um, I get them on Amazon. And then we are going to come in with our picture hanging wire. And just wrap it around our uh, D-rings here. And then that's pretty much all it is. Wrap this one up nice and tight. It had a couple of little pokies sticking out, so I'm smoothing that out just a little bit with some tools there. And as you can see, it's nice and sturdy. And uh, there's the, the Prince one, the Purple Rain one, uh, the white one with some clear feet. And you can see how, how those look here. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's actually hanging on the wall. It gets a nice little 
effect because of the lift from the feet. It gives it just a little bit more of that three-dimensional effect and you can see how the feet allow it to sit nice and flush on the wall. There's purple rain. That one's already sold to a client. Thank goodness I remembered to sign that one. And then there's our jellyfish hanging on the wall. And you can see what it looks like from behind, as well as my messy little hiding area for canvases and carrying paintings in the background. <laughs> And there's the jellyfish tile in a uh, a little plate, decorative plate easel. So they look nice either way, um, but I definitely like to have the hanging as an option on my tiles. So uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, go check out the Box Arts webpage and enter to win the drawing August 17th. Um, yeah. Thanks for being here, guys. Uh, I can't wait to uh, to bring you my next video and to uh, hold this first drawing. I'm really excited. Uh, let me know what you think uh, about these finished tiles and uh, and that whole process. And if you have any better ideas to add to it, feel free to share so everyone can benefit from that. Uh, until next time, you guys. See you later.